if you've been following along, once again, you'll see I've, I've, I've done quite a bit off camera. Just sort of finishing off the, the trees and that. I've done a bit of detail there and I've, I've changed those trees quite a bit and I've put in a bit of a rock, a rock formation on the side of the hill there. And really all I'm doing now, I'm just putting in a bit of the detail and I'm going to slowly work my way forward. It's quite a busy picture uh, in, the, in the background, but uh, you know, I may end up just rubbing all that out. I, I'm not sure yet, but I just wanted to play around with things. I was just experimenting because it was one of these pictures where I just had it in my head and made it up as I went along. The main thing is it was really just to try and get the windmill. You know, and the windmills, you see them everywhere here in the, in the Lockyer Valley because so much of the water is, is drawn up from the aquifers. People rely on the bore water. Especially the ones that sort of live away from the, the town supply. Like here and where we live in lately, we're, we're on town supply. Um, but we also have two tanks. Um, altogether we've got 8,000 litres that we collect from the rainwater. Now that's what Anna uses for, for the garden, so we always use, just use tank water. And you, you look at the creeks and everything around here and you go across a bridge and they're all dry and it's only when we have floods that there's any water in them. So water is really quite scarce at times, you know, especially when we had the drought. Like We were always conserving water. You know, we'd have a, a bucket in the shower or a bucket in the sink because the water actually takes a long time to, to heat up here for some reason. You know, I first set eyes on the Lockyer Valley back in August 2017. I hadn't been here long at the time and I remember my sister and my brother-in-law came and picked me up and they said, well, thank you for a ride, we're going to have a look at some, some old old buildings because I told them, you know, I was looking for old buildings that I wanted to draw, so... And they'd bought a property out at Laidley Heights, which was a couple of hours away from, from where I was living at my daughter's on the Gold Coast. So I ended up moving out um, to their place in Laidley Heights, um, living in, the, in their caravan. And then I moved into Laidley uh, when I met Anna. And I actually only came to Australia for my birthday. Um, that, that was six and a half years ago. And this place grows on you. I love it here. Now this little township of Laidley was um, named after Major Edmund Laidley. And he was a British soldier and an explorer. And him and uh, a chap by the name of John Finnegan, who was a former castaway, they first discovered the, the area along with John Oxley, who was another explorer, in 1823-24. The Lockyer Valley was formed in 2008 when the Gatton Shire and Laidley Shire were merged into one district. And it sits between Ipswich in the southeast and Toowoomba to the northwest. And is actually rated among the top 10 fertile farming areas in the world, growing mostly vegetables and and commercial fruit. When Anna and I first started researching the book, um, Beyond the Fence, I wanted to try and find buildings that weren't off the beaten track. I wanted to find the ones that were, you know, visible from, from not the main roads, but the, just, just the ordinary roads. They didn't have to be, as I said, off the beaten track. And we're looking at doing another book, this time based around the, the Pioneer Village, because I've actually drawn quite a few of the old buildings before I started the series. So. All I'm doing now is I'm just going to wanting to you know, do things like the windmills and, and some of the other machinery, the old trucks and that. And there's a lot, there's still a lot to draw, a lot. Now, getting back to the drawing, I'm just putting in some some grass there in the foreground, and then I'll just fill in the area behind the, the windmill and the water tank there, and then slowly bring it all together. So anyway. Once again, I think it's about that time where I stop talking. And depending on what part of the world you're in, grab a glass or a cup of your favourite drink, put your feet up, sit back and relax, listen to the lovely music, think about the wonderful weekend ahead, and I'll see you in a few minutes.
down here that I decided that it just didn't look quite right. So I rubbed it out and, and yeah, it just didn't, didn't fit well with me. So I pulled out the old artistic license and decided to make more of a straight horizon line. Although to be fair, there's no real artistic license involved because this drawing is, is completely in my head, apart from the windmill, uh, of course. someone draw or, or paint one of the most relaxing and therapeutic things that, that you can do you know most of us live busy hectic sometimes stressful lives and we all need something that that takes us to another place that allows our minds to take a rest I mean I know what art's done for me and to me art well art is therapy and I hope in some small way that I've been able to take your mind to another place somewhere restful and peaceful. Well, that's the last piece of the jigsaw for this classic Aussie icon, the windmill. And I really hope you have enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed sharing it with you. And I really love all your, all your wonderful comments. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments as well. And if you really like this video, you're going to love this one next. Well, that's about it for this week, my friends. Stay safe out there. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you in the next one. Same time, same place.